Hi, my name is Pete Doctor. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my third and last uh, film that I did at school. It's called Next Door. I always had this feeling growing up that uh, films would come to a filmmaker in a flash. One instant, they would know exactly what the whole film was, and then they'd just make it. Which, of course, if you've watched any of the documentary stuff on, on our films, you know is absolute you know, not true at all. <laughs> but on this film, it actually did come to me in a flash. I was obsessing over things that I was really interested in doing, playing with a kid's imagination, a stodgy character who didn't understand that, and using uh, graphics or, or color or anything like that to represent something deeper. And all at once, I just had this flash of what the film should be. So I had the concept, and I knew I wanted this little kid running around, and a friend of our family who is this little girl named Brooke O'Neill. Over Christmas break, I went back and recorded her making all these great screams and sounds and things, you know, running around. We just sat and pretended. And then when I got back, I could use that as the track then to animate too. So this process of running around like a crazed madman was actually a directing process that I've used several times since then. One of my interests uh, that last year at school was uh, symbolism. So this is a frame from the beginning, sort of camera moved down, and I basically just did the square and the circle, which then kind of became a thematic symbol throughout the film. So I, I tried to carry that same shape over into the grouchy guy who's in the film. He's got a big square head, and of course the girl has this big round head. Now, uh, we used this same kind of idea uh, in Up, you know, what can I say, I'm a hack, I use the same thing over and over. <laughs> the other thing that was fun about this film for me was I wrote the score for it. Again, over a break while I was back in Minnesota, I was able to hook up with the Greater Twin Cities Youth Symphony, and we recorded the whole thing, and that's what you hear in the film. When I finished the film in pencil test, Mike and Spike decided they would like to color it and play it in their festival. So once again, I boxed all of my drawings up and sent them to Canada, where the ink and paint house was. And two of the boxes never arrived. At first, when the drawings got lost, I thought, uh, you know what, I already work at Pixar now. I don't really want to do this whole movie again. It's a lot of work. Uh, but my mom convinced me that the girl who was the voice in the film, I owed her, and that I'd use the orchestra, and so sort of out of guilt and for my mom, I finished the movie. <laughs> At the time it came out, I felt pretty good about it. And um, I even had a couple of people tell me they cried when they watched it, which was like, wow, okay, that's what I want to do. You know, hopefully you have these layers. So you get laughs, you have something kind of to think about and something that you feel. And those things, you know, sort of clunky way all came together on this film. Once there was a queen. Yeah, once there was a queen, she wanted to have a lovely daughter and with lips white, right, white is blood. And what's this? Can I measure how big your hand is? Just as hammers, cranes, and bulldozers have extended our power, power. Kids. information that's time. <laughs> One thing, the 
computer is directed by software. Surrender, you scurvy dog! <laughs> Minded to do the same combination of tasks. Right.